Hey guys, it's uh, you know the O2 brothers here, uh, repping in a really well at this event, and uh, we're here to hopefully do a better job casting uh, this next one of two people that are actually able to win at Hearthstone. So uh, we've got Purple and Ignite coming up, both 1-0 in their group. One of them going to move on to tomorrow immediately, and yeah, with me is my buddy, <laughs> Lol Nostum. How are you doing, guys? <laughs> I'm sure they're doing great. Well, looks like we're going to get into game one pretty soon here. And uh, looks like it's going to be Rogue versus Warrior. So looking at what both players banned, Ignite chose to ban Warlock from Purple, so probably wants to avoid Zoo. And Purple chose to ban Warrior from Ignite. So probably just wants to avoid the Warrior class. That has definitely been the theme in this tournament. We're seeing a lot of Warrior bans out of a lot of lineups that people are bringing to this event. Yep, definitely. I think the two most popular strategies are just banning Warlock and Warrior. Uh, Warrior because you really can't for sure know what you're getting into with it. Uh, so many different variants. Looks like Purple... I, I would say it's probably... Cthune Warrior, but it could just be Control Warrior. I guess it's Cthune as well. Purple and Firebat have been prepping with together for events for the longest time, so I'd imagine that they have the same list for this event as well. Yeah, and Brand kind of gives it away. Like at this point, pretty, pretty definitely Cthune. And Ignite is going to be playing Miracle Rogue in game one. Uh, did see the Argent Squire, but he threw that away because it just doesn't really, you know, do too much against Warrior. Especially if he knows this is a control build, he can go for a greedy Mulligan. I definitely like being the Rogue in this matchup. I feel that you know, if you get that Auctioneer Conceal down, you're really favored to win the suit, uh, the game. Oh. Yep, and with a preparation as well. Ignite's definitely got all the things he needs to draw cards. Uh, and for Purple, it's just going to be a matter, I think, of like if he can answer everything and kind of armor up out of range, get the Ancient Shield Bearers down, maybe with Bran. Uh, but that's going to be kind of tough. Like Ignite basically has all the cards he needs to get out to a big lead. And it's almost just a matter of you know if his deck has enough gas to finish off the job. It's also unfortunate for Purple that he hasn't found any of the Cthulhu cards by now. Usually another way you could beat Rogue is just playing something like the Twin Emperor and just putting out a board that the Rogue can't easily deal with. Yeah, Rogue actually does not have an answer to the card Cthulhu in their deck. Like, you can't really sap it, then they just replay it. Uh, you don't really, really run any hard removal, so... Generally, a big Cthulhu can just be a game ender. But like you mentioned... Has not found a way to buff Cthune, so even though he picks up Ancient Shield Bearer, it's not really effective yet. So we see yet another person teching in this Ardent Squire into the real list. Who brought it to Dreamhack that really I, popularized it? I think I it was Sifka. Think, yeah, I think it was Sifka and JJ, and obviously Sifka did really well, got top four in the event, so kind of. A pretty liked inclusion. I mean, I find it pretty annoying. Like, when your opponent just plays square on one, that means with the dagger up, challenges anything with two health. With backstab, it challenges anything with three health, uh, which is becoming increasingly common these days. Like, it challenges Possessed Villager, challenges Alex Strauss's champion. Uh, it even challenges Living Roots. So, overall, it's just pretty powerful against the top decks right now. So Ignite has, you know, basically everything he needs to just pop off, but I feel like the main thing he's waiting on also is just to conceal. When you're but, two auctioneers, I like just going in with at least one of them here. Yeah. If it doesn't get that much value, you could even just use this backstab. You don't even have to use a prep, but oh. he's going to at least prep out one spell. Yeah, he picks up the conceal off the backstab, so I imagine that's going to be what he goes for with the prep, otherwise wouldn't have been surprised for him to like prep out a cold blood or something to start pushing extra damage. Uh, I like that he, brawl. Yeah. 
Warrior as a class just has no way to deal with that Stealth Auctioneer if it's just one minion. So I definitely like that trade. Yeah. And for purple here, yeah, it's just going to equip Gorhal. Um, makes the most use out of his mana. You can't really, you know, interact with the Gorhal. There's no spells that really do anything to it. So he's going to say go ahead to Ignite and let Ignite draw as much as he wants. Hopefully end up dealing with that Auctioneer somehow and hopefully get the job done. I think the Nightmare here would just be like double Cold Blood and Conceal, but Ignite is just going to go for kind of a more tame play because he has that second Auctioneer. He's thinking about whether he wants to slam this second Cold Blood. I don't really see a reason not to, even though it makes like one removal spell really good. I would just rather use it now, cycle it, get closer to, you know, the things oh. like Leroy. And finding that conceal is insane, because we see that purple does not have the brawl, and that's just going to connect again. Yeah, and I mean, you see kind of a sigh of frustration <laughs> from purple as he is uh, not happy about what's going on. Kind of also revealing in the process that he does not have brawl, which I'm sure Ignite would have figured out after this turn. He could shield block into it, uh, and that would remove 12 damage half the time, which I think might be what he needs to go for and even then uh, honestly it might be a little too late I don't think Bran and then just Disciple would have been that bad sets your Cthune cards active and then if you top deck a, maybe something like a shield slam you get a ancient shield bear shield slam but yeah he opts to go for the barrel play and he didn't find it yep so facing down at least 16 incoming this turn he knows there's no more conceals so he will be able to basically remove the entire board, most likely, with double execute, revenge, uh, disciple. Like you said, he wants to use Bran with the uh, disciple so that he can activate the shield bear. Uh, and and if he could do that, I mean, maybe there's potential. But when the cold bloods of your opponent double connect, it's pretty ridiculous. So this is definitely a big win for Ignite, even especially getting this Q, because we see that purple has Cthulhu Warrior, and that definitely matches up well against Ignite's Zoo and probably Aggro Shaman. Uh, I actually watched last match, and it is mid Shaman. Oh, okay. So uh, still not a bad matchup for Cthulhu Warrior. I mean, it usually goes to fatigue, and it can be very close depending on how greedy your your lists are. Um, but yeah, I would say this was a pretty fortunate cue uh, as far as what you really want your rogue deck to hit. He's going to play around revenge here. I'm not sure if that's intentional or not, uh, but leaves him at exactly 13. So revenge only dealing one right now. He can like proc it on himself by hitting into something, but... Not sure if that's going to be this, the play this turn or if it's just going to be like Brand Disciple on the 12-4, Bash on the 3-3, three, three, and Weapon down the 4-4. Four, four. That seems like kind of the play that jumps out to me. Now he's got an activated Revenge and basically throws up sand, says, hopefully you don't have Leroy and can kill me. And then honestly, if Brand sticks... You know, maybe you get there. And that That's is just lethal. lethal. Yep. yep. So exact lethal. Uh, thanks to Blood Mage spell power. Plus the double eviscerate. <laughs> this guy's toast. And that was sort of close for, for just how ridiculous Ignite's draw was, but for sure. If we didn't see that Avis top deck, you might have seen purple just start to armor out of range. But yeah. it still would have been a, such a sketchy game because the Rogue had such an insane draw. When you double connect two Cold Bloods, it's really hard for the Warrior to win from there. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing was just he didn't find any Cthune activators. So he had to use his Brand just on a Disciple. So even if he lived, uh, the Brand would have died and he would have only gained 10 armor. armor. I feel like he eventually would have gotten grinded out and probably died to Leroy. So Purple going with the counter cue of the Aggro Shaman into Rogue. Definitely hoping for the Doom Hammer. It's probably most important card in the matchup. Yeah, but just going to keep three one drops. Obviously, wants to have the early pressure as well. And Ignite's hand 
it's close. I mean, he's he's sort of like a spell or two away from having answers, but in the immediate future, he's going to have nothing to do about a tunnel drug. And for Ignite, I mean, if you kind of just look at this as a probable loss, uh, coming up, I mean, he's got two different options that are both pretty good. He's got Mid Shaman he could use to counter Q, or he's got uh, Zoo. But it is kind of the, the newer Wrathguard Zoo, which I feel like would have a worse matchup than traditional Zoo against Shaman. Um, so I think it kind of comes down to what he would rather have against Druid. And I feel like that's probably Zoo. So... Yeah, I Winning definitely game see one just toss really out that good spot. And I'm really interested by the fact Purple's being so passive. Um, I mean, he's clearly aggro shaman. He's got the abusive. He's got the horse rider. But he's just toteming. Uh, I would definitely would have liked to see just more pressure there. Whether it's just the abusive squire coining at a three drop. Yeah. Yeah, I think I just like coin Tuscar, I mean, I guess he's afraid of, of backstab SI. I, I really doubt that Ignite kept too many cards. If anything, I would think he only kept the SI agent. So I don't see a reason for Purple to be too scared. And especially now, I think he really has to go ahead to develop on the board as much as possible, uh, push out stuff that Ignite needs to deal with and get the pressure going. Yeah, a Lightning Bolt is definitely a good pickup off the top of the deck. I think it's very likely that we're going to see it used this turn. Yeah, I think there's two paths here. One is Tuscar Coin Lightning Bolt. Uh, the other is... Wow, this is definitely different than what I thought was going to happen. Uh, the other path I saw was just playing a one drop, playing Flame Tongue and Lightning Bolting. Kind of produces two threats on the board, the Flame Tongue and the Trog, but... This play was definitely a lot weaker to Fan of Knives. Uh, yeah. Not not sure if for some reason he thinks Ignite has it. Or doesn't have it, rather. I, I don't feel like he could really have a read on that situation since he hasn't ever given Ignite an opportunity to play Fan of Knives. Uh, so, I don't know. Just seemed strange. But it does set him up for a really great Flame Tongue if some of these minions live. Rogue is definitely in a better position than he usually is at this spot in the game. Usually they, they're staring down multiple threats that they can easily deal with, but Rogue's in an okay spot this game. Yeah, so I wonder... I mean, again, to me, this just looks like Tuscar Lightning Bolt, but um, Purple was probably eyeing maybe... If you want max pressure, you can go Argent Squire, Flame Tongue, and Lightning Bolt. Yeah, I like this Flame Tongue play. It pushes four damage, and yeah. just you have to deal with this Flame Tongue. Yeah, I mean, I liked it last turn even, too. So now that you've seen Backstab come out, you've seen both SIs come out, you know that the Flame Tongue is still pretty annoying to deal with. And, I mean, Sap isn't really a way to deal with it, so it's probably going to go unanswered, and that is very bad news for Ignite because his hand just has nothing to do about this. Do you think you could hold off on this prep sap, or do you think you have to use it right now? If you like sap it, a f sapping a flame tongue does absolutely nothing. They just slam it again and push four. So probably just yeah. going to have to play this villager and I hope that the auctioneer is an actual miracle turn. Yeah, I, w I would just go for the tomb pillager. Uh, your opponent gets a very easy trade, and you take five at minimum. But, you know, next turn you go gadget sand, coin, hopefully you pick up conceal. You prep out a spell, maybe you pick up second prep. Uh, that's really where I see this game going for Ignite from here. Like you said, a pretty literal miracle turn. Uh, but... Alright. Looks like a misclick from Ignite there. Big, you know, kind of throws his hands up in the air. Purple uh, giving a very strange look. Not sure what happened there. That's Rogue. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, definitely wanted to kill the Flame Tongue. With that play, I think he was going for, like, kill the Flame Tongue, uh, Gadget Sand, Prep Fan the next turn. But, I mean, obviously you'd have to draw the Fan in the first place. Uh, definitely Desperation stuff coming out there. Was not a great hand, not a great matchup. And, yeah, Purple played it pretty passively, but ended up working out pretty well. Um, there was just that one turn where he stuck the Flame Tongue, and 
I mean, just how awkward it was for Ignite. He had to Leroy it down. But uh, so yeah, this next next queue, uh, basically between Zoo and Mid Shaman, and like I said, I think it'll be Mid Shaman most likely. But definitely both decks are pretty good. So he's just gonna go for the more favorable matchup first. Mid Shaman's still just fine against Shud. Yeah. Basically, your pick here um, in this situation in LHS, you want to go with the deck that you feel is weaker against your opponent's deck they're not currently playing. So whatever he feels is weaker against Druid, he should play right now. Uh, and if he feels that the Zoo is weaker than Mid Shaman, then that's kind of why he's going with this. And you can even see his Zoo is kind of tacked potentially for a Shaman matchup. He's got a Cidic Swamp Ooze in there. The other card that we see is Soulfire, which is just so much better than PO against Shaman. You just take out the Totem Golem without losing a creature. Yep. Definitely swing a game in the very early stages. Yeah, I mean, pretty good compared to having to PO your Voidwalker and trade it in. Of course, you will have to discard a card, but uh, probably not too relevant in the long term. So Ignite trying to figure out whether he wants to play both these Voidwalkers or just one. I think he's just going to play the one this turn. Yeah. This also kind of increases his uh, best case scenario, which is Soul Frying a Totem Golem and discarding Coin. Uh, that way he gets to keep all of these resources that are so valuable in the matchup. But this is really where he's just going to start uh, just tempoing out purple. And he did discard the Coin. So I'm interested that he didn't play Voidwalker first. Uh, maybe he literally just wanted to maximize the chance of holding on to the ooze. Uh, that seems like probably what it'd be to me. Yeah. Purple picks up nothing, and it is going to be a long road to recovery for him. Have we seen whether Purple's deck runs a Lightning Storm in previous uh, series? Uh, no, I have not seen him play this deck besides just that last game, so I'm not sure on that front, but... That would be an important card to draw. Oh, there oh. it is. Yeah. Uh, obviously not going to be the play this turn. But, you know, if Ignite goes into that too far, uh, it could be a very relevant card. And I do like him kind of going for the, the higher value on the thing from below. He could have just slammed it down this turn. But you definitely run the risk of just your opponent playing buff cards. Um... And now, hopefully, Ignite, from Purple's perspective, is going to extend into the Storm. But maybe Ignite knows the Storm's there, chooses to trade out a Voidwalker instead of the Divine Shield, gets to protect the Lance Carrier buff, and that is also going to be very hard for Purple to deal with. I like Purple holding on to just one more turn for the Storm, because you just really want to use it for a swing turn, because if you play a Lightning Storm and don't develop, it doesn't really do much, because the Zoo yeah. could just flood the board again. But if you play it in the same turn as that thing from below, you could definitely see a comeback in the game. Yeah, and now he can go uh, Totem, thing from below, Storm. So, makes a lot of sense. The Argent Horse Rider was really strong on this board. And we'll have to see how Ignite chooses to deal with it. Probably just going to trade in the uh, Lance Carrier. Oh, he's not. So I, I guess he is kind of going to get punished by this storm. Only the Arden Squire is going to survive. And that's going to definitely pose for a comeback for Purple, especially with the Feral Spirits follow-up. Yep. I mean, I don't really see another play other than that. And then also picked up extra taunts to crutch on for the late game. Um, going to have five mana to play with next turn. So maybe he's thinking about the potential of, of Storm Feral Spirits, but that doesn't really make sense to me since you're leaving behind a 3-1 on the board. I think for sure he's going to end up going with the Storm this turn. Be pretty surprised if he goes for anything else. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he, could, he could play. He could play Flame Tongue. That might be what he's thinking about. Whether he wants to go Flame Tongue into Thing from Below Storm, or just the Totem. Well, yeah, I don't see much point to to Flame Tongue. I mean, it gets better this way. Like next turn, you could go Feral Spirit Flame Tongue, um, using it either to buff the Feral Spirit attack or to use it on this Totem. You pretty much concede the fact that yeah, 
Ignite's going to have an attack buff and probably kill this thing from below. But at least that deals with the Argent Squire, which is kind of becoming a nuisance. Pretty good uh, Argus pickup with the brand in hand for the future turns. I He could try and stick the brand this turn and kind of risk it dying, but I don't see many ways it dies. Uh, or he could just go for tap, abusive, Argent Horse Rider. This turn's a little awkward because you could just play the minions that aren't brand and Argus, but then your opponent does have five man and Doom Hammer Doom could easily come down this turn. So it'd definitely be a little bit of a risk, but knowing Purple's hand definitely would be the stronger play in this case. Yeah, and I mean, heading into exactly five mana for Purple, you kind of have to wonder, did he plan to play Doom Hammer next turn? That could be a potential thing. Uh, and Ignite's mind, I mean, I don't mind just tapping. I feel like you're pretty safe at that point. Like, you've got the backup case of Aesthetic Swamp Ooze, but you also just have a really powerful hand. That's definitely a good pickup. Now, Purple could play that Tunnel Trog alongside the 7-7 seven seven and put up yet another threat that Ignite has to deal with. That brand Argus play is going to be such a huge turn that I don't know if Purple's going to be able to recover from, though. Yeah. I mean, he's at the very least going to be able to kill off the Tunnel Trog for free with the Divine Shield and kind of pick wherever he wants to taunt. feels like Ignite is very much in control of the rest of this game, having already seen the Lightning Storm. Very doubtful that Purple has two Storms in his Aggro Shaman list. We saw one person do that in DreamHack who went deep. I think it was Deathlore who went 9-0. Yeah. Definitely something you can do, but I feel like that's more just to increase the frequency that you draw it in the first place. Um, you know, it's pretty rare that two Storms is what you want to draw against Zoo. Like, that just means you were very far behind. Yeah, Storm is definitely at its best when you're even on board because it just, instead of having to trade down, you just get to Storm and then push the damage. It's not really that great of a comeback card. Yeah, Doomhammer pretty much just kills him here if he plays it. Since he'd have to face tank A4-3 twice. So instead it's going to be Feral Spirits. But... I mean, with such favorable trades on the board for Ignite, he's at a very high life total. Purple's basically out of cards. Uh, I don't really see how this can go uh, into his favor. So, although we've seen the ooze since turn one, it's probably not going to come down this game. And if it does, it's definitely going to be game over for Purple. Yeah, I don't think Ignite kept it off the mulligan, uh, if I remember seeing it correctly. Wow. Uh, these looked pretty similar, but yeah, I guess you just take the PO off this one. And yeah, it's pretty much pick your poison as far as how you win this game. Be as safe as you want or as aggressive as you want. I think either way, Ignite's probably going to find himself a victory. So it's what's interesting for the next match coming up is that Purple has had the Sea Giant in his Druid deck, which definitely helps in this matchup, and even the against Shaman matchup too. Yeah, uh, Purple's playing Yogg Druid, but he has a very interesting inclusion, which is Sea Giant. And he kind of describes it as... You know, when you've got a bunch of minions on board, yeah, you can play Savage Roar, or you can play Sea Giant. And he said, when you're banning the Brawl class, which is, you know, Warrior, then the chances of your board being removed become so much smaller. You're running into Shaman, Zoo, and Yogdruid Mirror so frequently that you tend to have these situations a lot where both players have a large board. Uh, and Sea Giant can really be a huge swing. So definitely a tech that I don't think I've seen anyone else really run. Uh, he said it was the reason he won his first match. So 
I don't know. Hopefully he can pull some weight right now. I mean, he's got two matchups that it seems pretty solid against. He's got uh, Zoo, first of all, and then Mid Shaman, if he can pick up a win in game four. Yeah. The other person that brought it, he definitely prepped a firebat for this event, so they both have the Sea Giant. And we saw it come out in the matchup very sick, so, and it was he was able to cheat it out with the Living Roots to make the Sea Giant reduced by one. So definitely another thing that you could do with the card. Yep, and it's a pretty strong hand for purple. Goes with a three keep, even keeping a raven idol, which is a little greedy, I would say, but, you know, can help you find uh, innervate, can help you find swipe. So it, it's probably, like, slightly better than the average draw in your deck, which is why you chose to keep it. And he's going to go with Coin Wild Growth here. Looked a little perplexed that there was no one drop coming out of Ignite, but just going to ramp up to be able to kill the two drop, which could easily be uh, Wrath Guard. So <laughs> ramping himself into a Raven Idol Wrath play, most likely. You got to be feeling bad as Ignite right now. This is definitely the more aggressive Zoo list, and breaking on a one drop and then having Dark Pillar as your two drop is just not where you want to be. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, they actually play two less one-drops than the normal zoo list, but uh, yeah, not a great start, but Imp King bosses, even though they're not much power, they're extremely annoying for Druid to remove. Swipe, although not going to come out this turn, is definitely an important pickup for the Druid. Yeah. Definitely going to help him clean up the board and probably get to a Yogg turn, which Purple's uh, win condition is kind of spelled out in front of him here. Just has the Yogg, which is pretty likely to clear your opponent's board when you've cast a bunch of spells, which is something Druid does really well. Right now he's already cast uh, three spells, I believe. He's got Coin, Wild Growth, and Wrath in there, so going to pick up at least Three more off Raven Idol. The spell he gets off of it and swipe. So Ignite definitely has a couple different plays here. I don't even mind just this Argus on the one minion. Just it's it's really clean. But he's gonna play the Peddler, searching for something ideally like abusive. Yeah, I don't mind the Argus too much either. It, it just leaves behind a kind of weird board state for Purple to deal with. I kind of like this play less, but he's hoping Ooh. that he can just kind of set up a, an even better Defender of Argus. Yeah. I definitely might have thought of holding out of the swipe if I didn't see the one off the top, but once you see that second swipe, you know, you just definitely go for it here. Cleans up the board, and it's always going to be the position you want to put Zoo in. Yeah, and this Zoo list doesn't run Forbidden Ritual, so don't have to worry about, you know, Ignite making 5 one ones or anything. So when you see a good swipe, you kind of just go for it. Bye. Uh, against this list. So, purple, probably just going to go for the Fandor Raven Idol. If he can pick up Wrath, he can actually just straight out remove the Imp Gang boss. Wow. Uh, Aviana is interesting. Novice Engineer is a much safer pick, but yeah, just going to go with that instead. And... Yeah, looks like Innervate there. He can Innervate out Anixia. He could Innervate out Yogg uh, as a panic button. But, I mean, at 30 life on, you know, going into 8 mana for the Druid, this is looking really good. My shield for Argus. You could have taken the Wisp of the Old God, hoping that Fandra lives, but that's yeah. almost never going to happen. So taking yeah. the Innervate, just even though if you use it as a coin to get a Nexi out here, it's still just very good against Zoo. And as you said, he's at 30. He has so much room to use his health as a resource here. Yeah, I think the two picks that Purple went with there really signify how he feels about his spot in this game. He went with basically the two safest picks. Uh, could have taken kind of like Aviana for a ridiculous turn down the line, potentially. Uh, and could have taken Wisp of the Old Gods for a potentially ridiculous turn, but instead just says, yep, I'm probably going to win this game. I've got all the late game cards I need. I'm at a healthy life total, so I'll just kind of sit back and uh, pick up Novice Engineer, cycle into my deck, and have the best spell possible. 
I don't mind him innervating out this Raven Idol here. It creates the one ones at the least, even if you get a spell that you're not going to use this turn. Yeah. And if you get something like Roots, then it's even better. Clean up that 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Second Idol wouldn't be uh, awful. Innervate doesn't seem insane. I guess, I guess it's just Claw down the 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. I like the Claw here over the Starfall for sure. And he's definitely thinking about it, but I feel like the fact that you have Anixia and Yogg, like your next few turns are kind of painted out. Uh, obviously, you won't cast Yogg if you're still ahead on board, but feels like you're not really going to find time for that Starfall. We've definitely just been seeing this Druid deck, just been doing wonders for everybody. Although you like look at it and you see like the majority of everybody having Zoo and Aggro Shaman, it just seems to still just do good in what most people think is just pretty bad matchups for it. Yeah, it's it's certainly a deck that a lot of players say really has no bad matchups. It's, you know, worst matchups are 45% as low as 40%, which still isn't awful. Uh, and that's kind of just why it's so powerful. It, you really can't go wrong with it. Um, definitely just has solid matchups. And if you draw in the right order, I mean, basically, this deck runs no taunts. So, like, you kind of think you're a little weak to Zoo, but if you just keep putting out threats like Purple has this game and controlling the board, I mean, he did draw two swipes, to be fair, but uh, in, in those cases, you know, you don't even really need taunts to stabilize. Some players have gone with Ancient of War, but I don't believe Purple has that in this build. So, it is kind of a case of just rather than trying to be defensive, you just try and be even more offensive than your opponent and using Innervate to... Uh, push out the tempo. Yeah, this definitely is just game over for for Ignite here. So yeah. Definitely Barring uh, gonna Hellfire, play it out. I don't think he can really win this game. Nah, he finally concedes, so he's going to have the mid Shaman versus Yogg Druid, which is sort of a close matchup. The blow card is definitely mid Shaman can't seem to beat Yogg because mid Shaman likes to go pretty wide on board and Yogg punishes that pretty hard. Yeah, I mean, Yogg can always beat Yogg. It can just kind of go pretty poorly. But, yeah, it's definitely a tough matchup for the Druid, I feel like. And that's kind of reflected in how Ignite queued his decks. He went with the Zoo first uh, against Shaman. So that means that he thinks this matchup is pretty good. And cards like Thunderbluff Valiant, which I'm sure will get you know, pitched back in this opening mulligan. But later in the game, that is a card that Druid really struggles to deal with. Definitely. I definitely think I would prefer being the Yogg Druid here. Uh, as I played this matchup more, I just found that, you know, the games that you do draw Yogg, you just seem to win. Yeah, the other thing is, like, with the all the token generators, like Anixia, uh, you can Raven Idol into Wisp of the Old Gods. Like, with only two Storms in the deck, it's kind of tough. Like, you can constantly put your opponent on Storm or Bust spots with, like, Violet Teacher or Anixia, where if they don't draw it, you power the wild up, you soul the forest up or whatever. I don't think, you know, Purple's playing too many of those cute cards like Soul of the Forest, but he can always Raven Idol into them uh, and create board states that Shaman really can't deal with. So this is definitely a tough decision out of Purple. He might go for the Power Wild here. He could also just Hero Power this Totem Golem, especially if he knows that it's mid-range. I don't mind just the Hero Power going down on this Totem Golem. Yeah, this is a really important spot here. Because when Ignite goes for Coin Totem Golem, I mean, yeah, it's a strong play, but it also kind of signifies that he does have a one mana card. Uh, and half the time, that's a one mana spell. So, like, maybe he's he's wanting you to play the Power of the Wild for a 3 2 just to rock biter it down, and then Purple would be in an absolutely miserable spot. Whereas, Cure Powering, taking the, the three extra, just puts him in a, a much better spot moving further in the game. We definitely just see, like, an early decision like that just causing Purple to be in such a much better spot. Yeah, I mean, had he gone for the uh, Power of the Wild, he'd be tremendously behind. And, yep, just going to play the Violet Teacher. I think he kind of realizes, yeah, it's probably going to get dealt with. If it doesn't, sure, I can maybe have an insane turn, but uh, take some heat off him, gets rid of one of the Spirit Wolves. And this is kind of the first turn where Purple kind of concedes board control, says, yeah, you go ahead and play. Um, going for more long-term things here. Obviously, he didn't really have much to do that turn. 
Uh, so just going to Emperor, reduce all these cards next turn, and probably pop off with Teacher after that. He's reducing a lot of good cards here. You can definitely just see that he's going to just make a full board next turn with this Teacher. And they're all yeah. going to be 2-2s too. Although we do see that Lightning Storm and Ignite stack, so it's not going to completely just blow him out. Yeah, I mean, Purple can make them 3-3 three, three minions, so it's going to be a case of, like, the Storm is a 50-50 on each of them, uh, unless a Spell Power Totem is rolled. But can also, like, Raven Idol into a third Power of the Wild, into a uh, Soul of the Forest, and I think those are the two main ones that would make his board more resilient. Purple's counting up all his mana. I mean, this is a pretty obvious turn that's going to start with Teacher somehow and uh, go from there because he is already very behind on life. Yeah, I think you Raven Idol first. Um, maybe you get something that makes you not mulch. Well, Savage Row looks pretty good when you're making a bunch of tokens. Choose a swipe, though. It's kind of interesting. I guess respecting the fact that he thinks this board will get cleared. I'm surprised he went for that, though, because as you said, these are going to be 3-3s. Three if he doesn't roll Spell Power Totem, then it's probably likely for a lot of these guys to stick around. Yeah, and he's actually not going to use the roots. He's going to hold it back to use for the two damage function. Uh, so passing up on two more 3-3s, three which is... Definitely interesting. Uh, it'd actually be three more 3-3s. Three it would buff the 2-2 two -two to a 3-3 three -three as well. So he would have a board of six 3-3s three and a 5-7. Uh, I mean, I kind of would have liked to see him go for just the all-in play. Unless your opponent has Storm and rolls Spell Power Totem because you're a turn away from Azure Drake Storm, uh, you're looking in pretty good shape at that point. Yeah. If you could put yourself in a 75% chance to win, I would definitely take it. And it's definitely more than that, because it's not even guaranteed that they have the storm. Yeah. This purple kind of sits back. Oh, man. Wow. Definitely gets the bad end of that high roll. Uh, and a third swipe is picked up. So, you know, probably slightly regretting the swipe. Fandral is a great pickup, though. He's got... Is that four choose one effects? No, well, now it's three. Yeah. I mean, no no need to get greedy with the roots, I don't think. Eh, I don't know. Um, I like using the roots here. Keep the minion on board. The three one. Wow. Yeah, he's going to use it for the one one switch, in which case I kind of would have liked to see him hold it back. Almost definitely would have liked to see him hold it back. Because next turn he's going to Fandral, very, very likely. Um... I guess he doesn't have mana to play all the choose ones, is what he's kind of thinking. But the living roots was zero from the Emperor Thorson. So, I mean, the fact that it's going to do the two damage from hand and spawn the one ones because of Fandral, I think it made a little sense to just hold it back. And despite being really low, also uh, kind of just missed this, but... Mulch Cave Ignite and Iron Bark Protector. So, in a case of high value, that is pretty high value. So, we finally see that Yogg picked up by Purple. So, if this board does get out of control, he definitely has the card to try and pull the game back in his favor. And he, uh, Purple actually respects Alakir Rockbiter right there. He knows that one Rockbiter is out, but I think he's respecting his state in the game as... Maybe one of the only ways I lose is Alakir Rockbiter this next turn. So instead of going for the Raven Idol value, he goes for the extra 8 life from Feral Rage. And it's kind of a question now when we're going to see Yogg. Starts with Wild Ghost, so he could iterate it out, but... So we finally see that Sea Giant picked up and not going to do a lot here. Yeah, both players. This is, oh, I mean, it, it doesn't have the greatest synergy with Wisp because, you know, Wisp just fills your board. Um, but the turn afterward, it can be pretty solid. And he just saw the second storm. So, I mean, he's just free to do this. Uh, he's even going to throw out the Innervate, which... I think is a little surprising. 
Hmm. I wonder what he's thinking about there, because you're still safe to Alec your rock biter. Yeah, you're right? safe to um, pretty much everything at, at 19. 19 is like, plays around Flame Tongue Alec here, plays around Alec here rock biter. So, I don't know. Um, I feel like, yeah, all seven of your 1-1s one are probably going to survive. So the Sea Giant probably costs like close to free, if not free. And then you go swipe, swipe. But like maybe you pick up something where you want to use the Innovate next turn. I don't know. Could end up just working out, though, as uh, the opportunity cost of the hero power being worth it. So Ignite definitely looking at that. He might go with this, the big taunt this turn. Yeah, if Ignite kind of knows anything about Purple's List, which he's kind of been openly talking about, uh, he knows there's no Savage Roar. So there's not actually, having seen both Power of the Wilds and a Mulch, there's not much way to punish this 8-8. I mean, of course, there's there's double swipe when you've already seen a swipe, which is certainly not something he was expecting. And Sea Giant hits the board. Pretty good here. Yeah, that was for the old gods was just such an insane pickup off the idol. To be fair, Savage Roar, I think, might have just been lethal there. So, <laughs> uh, kind of. The logic that Purple uses, maybe not holding up true in this game, but uh, if he can still get the win here, then if Sea Giant's just good enough. No Taunt Totem is pretty nice for Purple. Just makes it easier for him to clear up this board. I definitely don't even mind playing the Anexia here. Just trade off a couple of these one ones. Yeah. Trade into three six. Although like you're not, you know, maximizing, you know, the one ones, I guess. It's not that big of a deal when you just have two big guys on the board. Wow. But you opted to go for the Azure Drake. Yeah, I mean maybe he wants to get the full clear. Uh he definitely can now. And then maybe just an Ixia next turn. Salt Purple doing some some counting there. I guess he really values the full clear here. Storm crack isn't gonna well with the spell power it actually is pretty good at dealing with that sea giant. Ooh. Also just the hex being picked up. This is just gonna be a clear board for Ignite. Yeah. That is if he chooses to go with that. I mean if you know Purple's list, like there's there's a lot of threats left and they happen to all be in his hand, which Purple's down to six cards in his deck. So, like, you got to expect, okay, Anixia is coming, Ancient War is coming, and maybe eventually Yogg is coming. So that's why I'm not surprised to see him hold back the Hex here. Feels like a 4-4 is kind of not the best Hex target in the game. And the Taunt Totem definitely makes things a little more awkward for Purple. Again, he's down to such low oh, wow. cards that he needs to make these cards work. So, you see that, the spell power on that Azure Drake, definitely oh, no. already affecting the Siog. Okay. You actually, uh, since the Innervate wasn't green, I knew he discarded it, and I was worried maybe that was uh, Ancestral Astral Communion, rather. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. He is dead unless if he, doesn't he picks pick up, up a something heal. extra. He needs it. Very soon. I'm almost out of cards. And, he, and he's running out of cards, which is also not very good. Armor game would also work, something like Bite. Yeah. But it needs to come, like, now. He's, yeah, that. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. An awful vanish. Entomb does nothing. Nope. And Spreading Madness he might, might just, just die. kill him. Well, no, we know the turn button's green, but he needs to heal, and the heal did not come. Uh, that was Def not a good Yogg. Definitely the worst Yogg I've seen in this tournament. Yep, that's going to seal it. Knight picks up the win, just barely. 
But I gotta say, I think this game goes back to that one turn where you could have filled that board with the three threes and you just put your opponent on that one spell power totem. I definitely would have liked that, taking the Savage Roar. Definitely yeah. could have pushed Lethal that next turn. Yeah, I mean, look at how it kind of panned out. The, um, the Living Roots was just used for 1-1s one later on, so I don't know, maybe uh, getting too greedy for that extra 2 damage, but yep, definitely might have costed him in the long yeah. run. Definitely a rough series. Never feels fun to have the series come down to a Yogg and yeah. Purple. Definitely not happy after that one. Feels fun for the winner, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of a sigh of relief for Ignite. He goes 2-0. Moves on to the round of 16 tomorrow. Purple will have to play the Deciders match, which I believe, uh, we don't know who that's against quite yet. So I believe just Saiyan and AK Wonder still have to play. And Purple's um, going to play the winner of that match to see who goes on yep. through the next day. So a couple more matches to bring you guys tonight. I uh, believe we'll have those coming up pretty soon. But for now, that does it for us. We'll be headed to a break. And we'll hopefully have some new casters hopping on the desk to bring you guys more action. <laughs>